don't think a guy's supposed to be breathing this heavy while golfing. <laughs> Well, Zimmer, that could be in the hole. Is that in the hole? No. <laughs> well, that's a hole in one. I come out here because I'm usually in my head too much. Let's see if this cuts or if I pump it right in the water. Well, recently I play those kind of characters. I play guys with a little bit of, yeah, grit. You know, arrogance, maybe it's my average white guy appearance that I come across as a guy who's a bit of a, a dick. Aliens come to our world and they what say, teach me about your music. <laughs> like, if we're going to put a collar on the air, it has to be better than whatever we had planned. Everyone is just out with the Leafs jersey on, whether they're going to the game or not. Access to your emotions, an open heart. I really only have like two emotions though. Ah, that's not true. Happy hyper and then tired. Happy <laughs> hyper, like a dog? <laughs> I got it. Nice. Yeah. Just left of the barber. It's the BNS in 20 Minutes or Less podcast. Your daily download of X929's X Mornings with Beckler and Shauna for the Calgary Sport and Social Club. Try a new sport this fall. Join a league or tournament. Register at calgarysportsclub.com. It's Friday, August 9th, 2019. I'm Beckler. I'm Shauna. I went golfing last night, Shauna. Yeah. With a, a friend of the show. It's a guy who's a, he's a local dude. He's a firefighter named Blaine, and he's got this side project on the go where he's making like a golf interview show. So he's interviewing a bunch of people from, from Calgary on the golf course, which means I had to go golfing, and that's probably only the third time in, a, in the last decade, I would say. How'd you do? Terribly. Yeah. Terribly. I think I shot a 10 or an 11 on the first hole. Yeah? Well, uh, I, I shot lost half of the balls he gave me. Today, my guest is Andrew Beckler. He's one of the co-hosts of the morning show of Calgary's X929. Together with his co-host, Shauna, they also operate the BNS in 20 Minutes or Less podcast with over 600 episodes already created. All right, so X929. So you're part of the... You guys won, you won an award, didn't you? Uh, we won Best of Calgary last year. Yeah, Best of Calgary. Yeah. So that's an interesting radio station, and you guys talk about it you know, quite frequently on the air, is you kind of act the same on air as you would if it's just like Shauna is your co-host, and if yeah. you guys are just out having a beer. We try to. I, mean, I think people can tell if you're not being authentic, and it's nice that the station allows us to do that. Like They're not telling us, be more energetic or do more of this. They just kind of like... Just go be yourselves and hopefully people like it. And so far, I think people do with the with our numbers and stuff. So, well, I think, you know, kind of the the recipe for success because you two are so, so good together is you don't really have callers. Like rarely do you hear a caller. Not very often. Yeah, because we our philosophy is kind of I think a lot of stations rely on callers just to fill time. Right. And we always think that, like, if we're going to put a caller on the air, it has to be better than whatever we had planned. Right. For that spot. And. Sometimes it is. We have some really smart and interesting people who listen to the show, but... Yeah, you get your regulars to call in. We do, yeah. Or sometimes we'll reach out to someone if we know they have an interesting perspective on something. But yeah, so like, where'd you go? You went to broadcasting school in Saskatoon? In Saskatoon, yeah. And it was just a real quick six-month crash course, and then you kind of had to learn everything on the job and work my way up from small towns. Right. So I think this is the... Sixth or seventh station I've worked at. Right. And they didn't give you anything. You guys make fun of it on the air quite a bit. The token KBSW. <laughs> is, that, is that a course that you just like skipped all the time? or The, the voices? The token radio voice guy. Yeah, I just like, th that's how it used to be in the 70s and 80s, guys with big voices and stuff. But people aren't really into that anymore. No. People want to hear real people, I think. So... I hope I hope this is my actual people are like do your radio voice. I hope this is it. This is <laughs>
I have a complaint. I would like to lodge a formal complaint. About? BNS in 20 minutes or less. The podcast. Average runtime, 27 minutes. That's if, uh, well, if you average all the episodes out, we are still You're just still under? under 20 minutes. I think we're at like 1950 something. There's a guy who listens named William and he has like a spreadsheet with all the times and stuff. And he updates us every few months and says, you're still under, you're still under. Well, that's nice. At least you got, you got a, enough of a following to have a spreadsheet guy. <laughs> it is. I think like the length is one of the reasons people keep listening to the podcast because it's so easily consumable. You know? well, well, that's how I know. Cause like my average drive to the fire hall is usually about 20 minutes. Perfect. So there's some times where I'm like getting back in after shift and trying to figure out where I left off. But that's uh, probably the average Calgary commute, I would say. Yeah. So that, that's a great model. No, these aren't tips. These are blue. We're back here. Look at the view from here. Yeah. You got the rail yard and then downtown. That's awesome. So the how did jumps? all of that come about? Because I, I think it's rare that a podcast came out of a morning show. Uh, more and more stations are doing it, but we try to be... Like, radio's changing so much all the time, and there's so much competition in podcasts and just with the internet. So we always try to... To be early adopters of, I guess, new technology and right. try to stay at the at the cusp of it so we don't get left behind. So from what I can tell, so it's a compilation of your morning bits. Yep. And then, this is me being a nerd, <laughs> at some points you can hear like a tone change, like a mic change. So is there stuff yeah. that's recorded after as well? Yeah, it's, so there's always like an intro and then we play some bits and then we'll usually like use our, our middle part to get into one of the segments more that we didn't have yeah, time yeah, you'll for. Yeah, expand, expand on one of the bits. Yeah, especially yeah. if we have kind of a, you know, like more of a serious topic that you really need to flesh out. Because right. we try to keep our, our on-air breaks under three minutes if we can. Sometimes they run okay. a little long, but right. sometimes that's not enough time to talk about a, a meaty topic, especially right, right. like in today's world where you have to cover all your bases and make sure you're not offending anybody. Yeah, yeah. So... Well, I have to say that like you and Shauna, but more specifically, you are very, very good at that in the sense that it's not like you shy away from those tough subjects. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're very, very vocal about, you know, making sure that, you know, you're being polite and fair, but still in the same time, like giving enough to like still voice your opinion. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Okay, so something that you and Sean talk about a lot on air is butts, especially on, in, especially on Instagram, Instagram butts. So it's like, no matter what the avenue, hiking, especially fitness, anything related where there's, you know, people posting stuff on Instagram, it seems to be an avenue for butts. It is, man. Like, butts have just taken over Instagram in the same way that, like, sports and politics have taken over Twitter. Yeah, you can't, and go, you're, on tw- can't go on Twitter without a, getting in a, a fight. You can't. I try not to, and I still get sucked into it. But Instagram's the same way. Like, you try to look up a hashtag that you're interested in, and all you see is fluffers, man. Just, like, especially if you, to bottom if you dumps. Just, if, if you just click search and don't type in anything <laughs> and just look at that feed. Like, like here's the most popular butts from today. You're like... Top trending right. butts of Thursday in Calgary. And then my wife mechanic comes in. She's like, what are you looking at? I'm like, this is what it served up this, to me. This I'm is sorry. What, this is what the analytics <laughs> told me I would enjoy. <laughs> but you guys are also pretty good at making things sexy. Oh, yeah. Like one of my favorite bits of you guys is uh, like you made the sea train sexy. Yep. What was the other one? Like artificial intelligence. You made that one sexy. I don't even know where that came from. But basically anytime there's something that's kind of publicly divisive. We're like, oh, we can bring people around on this. Some of the trade disputes between Canada and the US. And So we talked a little about it a little bit on the driving range. I'm pro 
getting people to golf that normally wouldn't golf and helping grow the game. So yeah, how about it's time we make golf <laughs> sexy. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe when we're finished the front, we can move around to the back. Ooh. We're Ooh. still in the front nine, aren't we? Yeah, we're still okay, in the front. Okay, good. The joke works. Ooh. Why don't I join this group and we'll make it a foursome? Oh. <laughs> It's the dumbest bit, and my dad just hates it. He's a regular podcast listener. That's such a stupid, oh, that's stupid what, segment. See, that's my favorite bit. <laughs> he and, like, it works it. so well for golf because there's so many like sexual innuendos. Oh yeah, golf. any sports really. But yeah, we get a, get a pretty good reaction to that one, so we keep doing it. And that's what I told my dad. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a, it's not really a, a dad approved bit. <laughs> I think I might be in the fescue over here, so. level of DEFCON? Is it one or five? What's the height? When you say DEFCON five, is that worse than I one? I think so, yeah. Because that's what level of heel blisters I'm on right now. DEFCON, DEFCON five. No, I just try to wear these stupid no-show socks to look cool and I... <laughs> <laughs> well, you look fantastic. Well, I appreciate that. I would say your golf fashion is I don't, spot on. I don't feel fantastic. We need a birdie flask, folks. Could have been a little bit buzzed by now. We were talking about golf fashion on the air just recently. I know. Did you hear that one? I did hear that one. I was so saying, correct me if I'm wrong, you were talking, you were out somewhere like on a pub or a patio. Yeah. And you're like, it's very, very obvious that these guys just came off the golf course. Yeah, and I find it, it's very, and maybe, you know, you're from a blue collar background like I am, it's difficult not to look a bit pretentious in golf clothes. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. was wondering if there's such a thing as like alternative golf wear. Yeah, so there, I wouldn't say alternative, but there is a little bit of a, a trend changing with like golf, fa golf fashion. Like and no like collars culture. and stuff. Yeah, blade and... collars. Like Nike had like a full denim line to combat the whole no denim on a golf course. And, ah. But yeah, it, it has come a long way from, you know, gap khakis and this and that, but it's, uh, there's a little bit of a trend right now for like young, cool, hip golf, where there's like a little bit more styled stuff, but yeah. That's good, because I, I think I said when these guys walked into the pub, like every single one of them looks like they're gonna try to get their dad to sue me. You know, like that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's the look. Like the Princeton, Princeton, that, that's Princeton high collar Ivy League. <laughs> and that's just deal. not really me, I guess, but. Right. Yeah, golf fashion. You guys talk about fashion a lot. That's my other, my second favorite bit. Oh, really? The hot fashion trends. Which is probably funny because I don't, I don't know how you dress off the course, but I'm not a very fashionable dude. I just, functional dad wear is my look, you right. know? Like I buy shirts that can take me from mowing work the, to, the, the to mowing the to, lawn to the wood yeah, shop yeah. to like wrestling with the kids in the grass. Yeah. And It's definitely changed for me a little bit being a dad, but I've always been a little more fashion forward. Took a lot of flack of it in Boness, but yeah. <laughs> I like I like the fashion. Oh, you fancy? Yeah, yeah I'm fancy. <laughs> My wife makes me fancier, but yeah. <laughs> I got some golf fashion trends. Do you? Yeah. So you mentioned the denim, obviously. <coughs> but can, that's a free tee right there. Cheap Sasky picks that up. Can you uh, you set one up for me? Because I uh, I need to master you and Sean as your your fashion. What is that voice? Is it like uh, a, I, it's like a runway announcer. Yeah, yeah, I just, and I just realized where that voice was was stolen from the other day, and then I forgot. I is heard, it is it Zoolander? It's kind it's kind of meant to be Zoolander esque, but whose voice was it? It's very similar to DJ Chris Shepard, who was on Much Music yeah, yeah, back yeah. in. Yeah, 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 it was. It oh, totally it's was. The hottest party in Toronto, and it's like you're from Toronto, man. Where'd you get that voice? <laughs> <laughs>
a comedian in Calgary. I think it's Adam Ruby. Yeah, he's from Bones. He's got this great bit about how when they were running from the police when they were young, they would carry a garbage bag in their back pocket, cut open at the bottom, but tied off at the top. So if the police were on them, they would run down an alley. Duck in. Throw the garbage bag over their head and duck down and pretend they were garbage. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know that trick? No, I don't. I should. I feel like I'm a Bonesian. I should have been grandfathered into that system. A Bonesian. The only thing that we would do is we would just like, I don't know if this even works, but you know when Hawk circles around yeah. and stuff? They're, oh yeah, they have thermal imaging cameras, so you got to lay underneath a car because then they think your heat's like engine heat. Eh? Ah, so if we're running, hack. not that it ever happened, but if we're running, we would yeah, just like curl up into a ball underneath a car and you get out and like <laughs> covered in motor oil and dirtiness. Only growing up in certain neighborhoods will you know that, right? Excuse me, I'm trying to putt here. Almost ate shit. Okay, so I break up my life into two separate sections. Part of my life, phase of my life where I don't need lip chap, and the phase of my life where I do need lip chap. It's now a, it's a lip chap conspiracy. So now I'm hard. currently in a phase where I need. I have car lip chap. I have golf bag lip chap. Yeah. I have like fire hall lip chap, bedside lip chap, lip chap. So like for five. For 15 years, I did not need lip chap. And now, I need it. And I need it like every hour and a half around the clock or my life is absolutely miserable. So do you think you're just drying out because you're getting it older? Out. It dries, no, I think- The lip chap does. I think the lip chap does. Because the more you use it, the more you need it. Or it's like a placebo and it just doesn't do anything. But have it tastes, you ever heard, tastes like mint. Have you ever heard the theory that there's little bits of fiberglass in it to make you need more? I don't know if that's true or not, but that is the conspiracy theory. That's the going one. There could be something in there that it's like very, very moist for like 20 minutes and then 20 minute, yeah. 21. <laughs> it's like eye drops. Did you know if you use too many eye drops? Yeah. This is stoner talk here, but uh, your eyes dry out. They stop producing them naturally. Big eye drops are, are in on it too. Light bulbs. There's little holes in light bulbs apparently that they burn out. Really? That's another thing. I've talked about that in there, how they say like, oh, this... You know, in this uh, LED bulb will last for 10,000 hours. Fat chance. Not even close to that. Should probably pump the brakes on the conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, going. he's gonna edit all this in. I'm gonna look like a crazy person. <laughs> I've always said to my wife, even if we could afford to live in a super high-end neighborhood and go to private school and stuff, I don't know if I'd want our kids to. I think there's something to be said about 
growing up kind of around like, you know, real life. Tell me I look good. 